Hey welcome again to Decent TNC. If it is your first time do subscribe, like and share the video. This video will show you the power of modern architecture of different buildings in Rwanda considering tradition architecture, some building are already completed others are not yet constructed. Let us start on 6. Basade Lodge, Architects, Nicholas Pullman Architects, Year, 2018, Architects in Charge, Gareth Creel, Nick Pullman, Clients, Wilderness Safaris, Engineering, De Villiers Sherd, City, Musanza, Country, Rwanda The architects describe this project as, inspired by the rolling hills of Rwanda and the thatched design of the King's Palace at Nyanza, Basade sits woven between the lush growths adjacent to Volcanoes National Park. Basate reflects the innate organic culture of Rwanda and reflects sophisticated spaces around every turn. Craftily designed the spherical rooms and public areas add bespoke and sustainable solutions to the intricate and difficult surroundings. The design is a celebration of modern luxury and a unique culture which has stood the test of time, becoming a platform from which the guest experience departs. Due to the nature of the site, all the structures had to undergo prototype development in Cape Town, South Africa, be disassembled and reassembled on site in Rwanda. Because of the remote location all systems and services are fully incorporated and off-grid. Basate is the merging of modern and sustainable construction techniques, top-tier luxury and cultural thoughtfulness. 5. Faculty of Architecture and Environmental Design, Architects, Patrick Schweitzer and Associates, Area, 5,600 square meters, Year, 2017, Client, MINEDUC The architecture practice Patrick Schweitzer and Associates responded to the international call launched by the Government of Rwanda in March 2012 for the construction of the new Faculty of Architecture in Kigali. This school covers an area of 5,600 square meters and has the capacity to accommodate 600 students. It is located in the University of Rwanda College of Science and Technology campus in Niaragunj district. The works started in early 2017 and were completed at the end of 2017. The building is the result of a global site analysis. Its architecture is inspired by the territory and by colors and shapes found in nature. The four natural elements are represented in the conception of the building, fire, orange color, water, inner garden, air, circulations, and earth, lava rock and rammed earth. We created prisms inspired by Rwanda landscape and topography. We broke their volume down to create fault lines and canyons. A central fault line emerges, the outdoor living space. It opens the project to the kist entrance, to the valley and to the city. The agency selected a strong design with complex shapes. Halfway between traditional and contemporary architecture, the building is based on a simple and didactic architecture in an African developing country where population is expected to double by 2050. 4. Gahanga International Cricket Stadium. Architects, Light Earth Designs, Area, 650 square meters, Year, 2017, Architect, Anton Larson, Architectural Technician, Marco Gronstage, Engineering Support, Oliver Hudson, City, Kigali, Country, Rwanda. The architects describe the project where project is part of work undertaken by Light Earth Designs for the Rwanda Cricket Stadium Foundation over a five-year period on how Rwanda can transition from an agriculture-based economy to development using local labor-intensive construction techniques, thereby avoiding imports, lowering carbon, and building skills and economies. The primary enclosure of the cricket stadium, the vaults, adapts ancient Mediterranean tile vaulting, using compressed soil cement tiles, to a moderate seismic context by using geogrid reinforcing in the layers and bearing the springing points of the curved vaults on the ground. The vaults follow the natural resolution of forces toward the ground, closely mimicking the parabolic geometry of a bouncing ball and evoking the cherished hilly topography of Rwanda. The masonry vaults are completely in compression allowing the use of a simply layered thin shell composite of low-strength tiles. The tiles are produced on site from the local soil by low-skilled and skilled locals, hydraulically pressed with a small addition of cement and do not require firing. They are laid in layers onto a temporary timber skeleton which spans up to 16 meters. Geogrid is added to give some seismic protection, developed by research in architecture and engineering at Cambridge University. 
The shells are waterproof, then topped with local broken granite, blending into the natural palette while the granite adds weight and stability. Simple, efficient and thin concrete tables are inserted into the vaults, providing space for the more enclosed functions, the service areas, the changing rooms, an office and a restaurant. These tables are topped with natural Rwandan agro-waste fired tiles made of commonly found wetland clay. The open mezzanines, a bar and a clubhouse, enjoy wonderful raised clear panoramic views over the oval and wetland valley beyond. Bricks are used to define edges and spaces, often laid in perforate bond, allowing the breeze and light to filter through. These bricks are sourced from enterprises set up by Swiss NGO Scat Consulting and are also low-carbon agro-waste fired bricks using high-efficiency kilns, further reducing energy and carbon. Waste stone from Rwandan granite floor and worktops are used for flooring. The plywood rectangles used to press the tiles are reused as countertops while timber and plywood from the vault guide work are made into joinery and doors, ensuring that a maximum of waste material goes into primary production. Local slate is configured to allow rainwater to permeate and infiltrate the soil. Retaining walls are either local granite boulders or are hollow to encourage planting the banking creates a wonderful natural amphitheater with great views of the pitch and wetland valley beyond. Whilst the language of the building speaks about progression and dynamism through extreme structural efficiency, the materials speak of the natural, the handmade and the human. It is a building made by Rwandans using Rwandan materials. The imperfections are celebrated, they are human and beautiful, and when combined with the layering of natural textures the building becomes imbues and celebrates this wonderful place. 3. Kigali Convention Center. The Kigali Convention Center was unveiled in July 2016 and continues to be the talk of the region. The vibrant space is now the region's center for technology, innovation, and luxury tourism as it welcomes foreigners and hosts international events with esteemed guests from all over the world. The construction over 105,000 square foot venue came at a hefty price, as President Paul Kagame reportedly borrowed $300 million for the building. According to Rwanda The New Times, Kagame put Roland Dieterle, a German designer who at the time was the chief architect at Siemens, the largest engineering company in Europe, in charge of the expensive project in 2004. Dieterle was flown to Kigali by the Rwandan embassy after a government representative noticed his work at an event in Dubai. The inspiration even though the convention center is positioned to encapsulate Kigali's bright future, the architecture is an ode to the country's glorious past and rich traditions. The blue, yellow, and green dome represents the shape of the former king's royal residences. For a closer look at what royal life was really like, travelers can head to the city of Nyanza to visit a reconstruction of the original palace. Attached to the dome is a Radisson Blue Hotel with a bold multi-colored exterior resembling a traditional Rwandan weave basket. At night, the structure is always lit up allowing everyone to enjoy these details at all times. From its 18 conference areas to nearly 300 hotel rooms, multiple restaurants and more, the convention center is versatile. Plus, it's only a short 10-minute drive from the Kigali International Airport, proving it was intended to be at the heart of the city. When I came to Kigali and was asked to make a design for the convention center I went around Kigali and I saw that there's no real center in the town, and also there's not a real landmark building, Dieterle explained to the New Times. So immediately the idea came up to make a design which is also a landmark building for the city. Last, but not least, the environment. A strong emphasis on sustainable efforts became the ultimate finishing touch for the iconic campus. The dome was constructed with LED lights that not only shine, but more importantly, last longer and conserve plenty of energy. The toilets use repurposed water, making this convention center not only the most expensive building on the continent, but one of the most eco-friendly as well. 2. Nyamata School Hall, a hall for reconciliation and peace building. 
Client, reach for Rwanda charity build cost, £30,000 build area, 220 square meters date, 2014 architect, Squire and Partners Engineer, AKT2 The UK charity reach for Rwanda is operating a program which supports fractured communities in Rwanda affected by the genocide in 1994 through a positive reconciliation process of micro-business startups, workshops and testimonies in the community. Founded by Reverend Philbert Kalisa in 1996, through his great vision and determination. Sawa teamed up with Squire and Partners to design a community school hall for the town of Nyamata in east-southern Rwanda. The school will be built by former perpetrators of the genocide alongside a victim's family members as part of the reconciliation process. The hall could be used for various gatherings of different sizes and functions, operating as a space for reconciliation and forgiveness but also as a commercial space for wedding hire etc. We studied the historic building vernacular and the Rwanda King's Palace for their use of local materials such as earth, timber, thatch and plant leaf which inform their designs, and taking inspiration from traditional structures, we developed a design model with an interlocking block mold which could create a variety of curved walls and openings. The roof is designed to respond to the request for an oculus window to provide high-quality natural ventilation and light. The circular window in elevation sits above the circular wall in the plan, held in place by 12 bowstring trusses arranged like the points on a compass, keeping the window open to the south away from prevailing winds and allowing direct sunlight from the north. 1. Foster Plus Partners unveils design for Droneport in Rwanda. Foster Plus Partners has unveiled designs for a droneport in Rwanda, proposed in an attempt to bring more efficient medical care and commercial delivery services to communities in Africa where there is a lack of infrastructure required to meet the population's needs. Just a third of Africans live within two kilometers of an all-season road, explains the press release. It would require unprecedented levels of investment in roads and railways to catch up with the exponential growth in Africa's population, which is set to double to 2.2 billion by 2050. Foster Plus Partners instead proposes to leap that development hurdle by making use of 21st century technology, namely drones. Rwanda challenging geographical and social landscape makes it an ideal test bed for the Droneport project, said Norman Foster. This project can have massive impact through the century and save lives immediately. The project is the first initiative of the Madrid-based Norman Foster Foundation, working alongside Foster Plus Partners, Redline, the organization that has helped to develop the drones, and the École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne EPFL. The Droneport includes a health clinic, a digital fabrication shop, a post and courier room, and an e-commerce trading hub, making it a key civic building in its own local area and its design allows the drones to land safely in a densely packed area. Thank you for watching.